Hey everyone! Last week I uploaded a video on why I started sleep training, specifically baby-wise, which you can check out right here if you haven't seen it yet, where basically I just share why I started sleep training and why I still do it up until my third child. Today I'm going to talk about how baby-wise actually works. Now contrary to popular belief, it does not work by starving your child or depriving your baby of its needs. It does quite the opposite by giving your baby exactly what it needs. Babywise, if you don't know what it is, is a sleep training method that keeps the baby on a pattern and it follows this pattern of feeding time, wake time, and sleep time. First, I will cover feeding time. So how does putting your baby on a feeding schedule make this work? Well essentially what you're doing when you put your baby on a feeding schedule is training his metabolism to eat at specific times. So if I feed him at 7 o'clock and then I feed him 3 hours later at 10 o'clock and if I do that again 3 hours later at 1 o'clock then his body, his metabolism is getting used to getting hungry every 3 hours. But as a newborn like when the baby just comes out and they're latched to your breast you shouldn't be like Okay, you have to wait three hours till the next feeding. When they're a newborn, just keep feeding on demand until mommy and baby get used to breastfeeding. If you are breastfeeding and for the baby to get used to sucking and to stimulating the breast for it to produce more milk, do that when the baby's a newborn. Now here is something very, very, very important that I wish I knew from the very beginning with my first baby. It is very crucial to make sure that your baby gets a full feeding in every single time. And that means 15 minutes on each breast at least. And that is very hard to do because newborns are very extremely sleepy creatures. If you've had one, you will know that as soon as they're latched onto your breast, they will just fall asleep right away. And our tendency is to be like, oh, okay, they're sleeping, they're done, let me put them down and let them sleep. That is not what we should do and I had to learn the hard way. It's so important for the baby to get a full feeding so that the baby can be happy and full and so that our breasts can produce as much milk as they possibly can by the baby emptying it as much as possible. But the problem is, again, the baby always falls asleep. What I did before was I wouldn't try to wake up my first baby, Rian. I would just be like, okay, she's sleeping and then we'd be in this cycle, she falls asleep so I put her down and then she wakes up a few minutes later crying so I put her back on the breast because I think she's still hungry, which she is, but then she falls asleep again. Then I put her down and it happens over and over and over and over over again but we have to work hard mamas to keep those babies awake get in that full feeding when the baby gets a full feeding in he will be happy content he'll be able to have a better nap because he'll be full and he won't be hungry until the next feeding time now feeding times will vary depending on the age of the baby it begins at about every two hours as a newborn and after about a week or two comes every three hours once they learn how to get in the full feeding once the mom's milk comes in and around four to five months or sometimes even before that like with my kids it can become every four hours it doesn't mean they're getting less milk if there is a longer time in between their feeding times that just means they're taking in more milk during their feeding times so right now Bella my youngest baby she just turned three months old she can very easily go into a four hour routine sometimes she is it's a combo of three to four hours she's on a pretty smooth feeding schedule but I always try my best to make sure there's at least 15 minutes on each side so that I know the baby's full and I know my breasts will produce more milk next is wake time wake time is basically the time that the baby is awake uh. during the feeding and after the feeding she's watching me right now I put like towels on the sides of her crib so that the light won't go in but that obviously doesn't matter because she's still awake so anyway, wake time. Wake time will also vary depending on the age of the baby. Again, as you know, newborns are super, super sleepy, so they will have barely any wake time. I know they're super hard to keep awake, but do your best to keep them up at least for the feeding and maybe even 5 to 10 minutes more before they go back down to sleep. Now the typical amount of time for babies, for them to be awake, is about one hour. Why is that? I have no idea, but the certified MD that co-author Babywise explains that in the book. I have seen this to be very, very true. I kid you not, there have been times that I put them down 
literally just 10 minutes after an hour and it's so hard for them to get to sleep compared to when I put them down 50 minutes or an hour after they wake up. You try it. I'm not joking. What I do now with Bella is after 50 minutes, that's when I start getting her ready to go back down for a nap. So I keep her wake time at one hour. She feeds for about 30 minutes. After that, we either go down outside, get some fresh air, play with her sisters, or I put her on a play gym. I read to her, I talk to her, I play with her, I try to interact with her that's what happens during wake time and I try to get her tired so I don't just want her to be laying there and doing nothing but if I'm gonna do that I'll put like a toy on top of her so she can follow it or I'll put her on her tummy so she gets tired trying to roll over which is really funny watching her do so those are some of the wake time activities I do with her and that I've also done with Rian and Audrey for example she wakes up at 1 o'clock then at 1.50 that's when I start to settle her down for her nap. I close the curtains, make it dark, and then I change her diaper. I put on some music, put on some lullabies, and then I swaddle her. All of my babies slept so much better with a swaddle. I guess they just like the feeling of being all swaddled up because that's how they were in the womb. At the same time, they don't know how to control their arms and legs yet. That's why if ever you see them like get scared, they're like... <laughs> When you're swaddled, you can't do that. So all of them I swaddled until about three months. For the last five minutes of her wake time, I usually rock her, sing to her, settle her down before I put her down for her nap. Which brings us to the last part of the cycle, which is sleep time. Now this is the part that moms that are against baby wise hate the most. And moms that are doing baby wise hate enduring the most. Why is that? Because you let your baby cry it out. I know, I know, if you're watching this and you're totally against this, you probably think I'm a horrible mom, but it worked for me and my babies are healthy and strong, so I think it's okay, they've survived. It's always in the beginning that this is the hardest, when you first start letting your baby cry it out, but I tell you, it is so worth it. By this time, Bella barely cries before she goes to sleep, unless she I put her down late or if she's overstimulated or overtired other than that she can honestly just go down without crying and put herself to sleep I will post a video on that I will show you exactly how I do it and exactly what Bella does and how it's done I did this for all of them so once wake time is over I put them down in their sleeping area so it can either be a pack and play or mom and dad's bed or the crib that they sleep in at night or a chair an infant chair that's what i did for rian because we lived in a loft so i had to keep her downstairs with me so that we would only have to use one electric fan and it would save us electricity <laughs> so she would sleep in an infant chair which she did just fine um audrey was in a pack and play bella is in her crib when i first started so it's not so hard is uh, I'll let her cry and if she cries up until 10 minutes then I pick her up and then soothe her a little bit and then put her back down to do it again until she learns how to put herself to sleep. Sometimes if I'm doing something, if I'm doing some chores or if I'm taking a shower, I just let her cry until again she learns to put herself to sleep. Now the question that I've gotten most is how long do you let them cry? And if you watched my last video, I let Rian cry all day like she cried pretty much through her sleep times because I started late with her I started baby wise with her at about three months so she was already used to something else she was used to me rocking her and that's what made it so much harder because I started late with her but she still did learn so I would say whatever you can handle. Moms, you have the final say. You're the one who knows what's best for your child. It won't be the same for every baby. So you know what's best. Only you can answer that question. But at the same time, don't be like, okay, I'm just going to let her cry for one minute and then I'll pick her up. Because you're not letting her soothe herself or you're not letting her learn how to soothe herself. So give it some time. I would say at least 20 minutes. I know that sounds really long. If she's still crying after 30 minutes, it's then check that it's not something else. A poopy diaper, she didn't get a full feeding so she's still hungry or something's irritating her. So don't be afraid to check your baby. But at the same time, balance it. 
Don't be afraid to let your baby cry. Sometimes a baby is most comfortable sleeping in somebody's arms. Now, if you're okay with the baby sleeping in your arms the whole time, that is totally fine, but that would not work for me. I did not have a helper with Rian, and there was also a time that I did not have a helper with Rian and Audrey, and I was very pregnant. So that would definitely not work for me, holding the baby, cooking, and then cleaning, and then taking care of the other kid. That is just not practical, so I couldn't do that. And at the same time, when I would hold the baby for the whole nap, her nap would never be nearly as long as it is when I put her down and let her sleep on her own. Without letting the baby be uncomfortable for a while crying, we train them to be dependent on a prop, whether that be a pacifier or a mom rocking them. Okay, she's probably going to be in like all of my videos. <laughs> because she always wakes up. Anyway, so that's it for baby wise, how it works. It works by following a cycle of feeding time, wake time or play time, and sleep time. So I hope that this helped you and if you have any questions then just leave it down below in the comment section and if there's anything you want to add, what helped you, what kind of things you did during wake time, then leave that down below too so I can learn from you as well. Look Bella, your hair grew so fast. She's like, oh my gosh, mom, get it off of me. Your hair is so dead and hard. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then please don't forget to subscribe. You'll be seeing more of these kinds of posts on Baby Wise. That's what I'm doing for the next few weeks. And I'll be showing everything from how I do it to how to produce as much breast milk as you can to how to help your baby fall asleep. Everything that covers Baby Wise, I will be posting. So subscribe to my channel so you can stay updated. And like this video if it helped you. I want to know that I'm helping people. Because if I'm not, then I'll just stop doing this. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Please come back, check out my other videos, and see you again next time on Infinite Mom Abilities.